Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Tonight, a couple of questions come up that uh, one is a discussion of afferent and efferent neural networks and feeling as opposed to doing and um, how that affects our practice. The other was a, an overview of meditation and particularly the stuff that I was teaching at uh, Kripalu earlier, I guess almost a, a year ago, holy smokes. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that was a year ago. Uh, I taught a, a week long meditation course, which was sort of an overview of various types of meditation, various uh, a smorgasbord of meditation techniques. And uh, uh, so we'll talk a little bit about that and how that relates to spiritual development. So uh, let's start off with the idea of efferent and efferent neural network, because this is really crucial. This is something that is at the core of Taiji Tran development. That is feeling, learning how to consciously, intentionally feel. For most of us, this the sensory motor network is a largely pre-conscious activity. That is, you don't know what's going on for the most part. You are doing stuff and feeling stuff, and for the most part, it's not registering at a conscious level. I would, in my language, it, it, that is part of awareness. We are aware of all these things occurring at some level of our being, even if we're not conscious. Conscious for me is the use of the what we consider to be the conscious mind. That is, we know that we're aware. Whenever we are aware of stuff that we don't know that we're aware of, then that's happening. That's happening at a pre-conscious level. So, to me, that's a that's a useful way of thinking of that. And most of what's happening, any moment of the day, is happening at a pre-conscious level. So you're constantly being bombarded with sensations, with um, perceptions. There's things going on every moment of which you can consciously be aware of maybe a millionth of what's going on in any given moment. And so consequently, we have to, we're ramming all that, that life through a very narrow aperture. It's like, you know, looking through a keyhole of the world and you're kind of, you kind of get in there and you, you say little, you know, one thing at a time. Another way of thinking of it is being like in a uh, in total darkness and you've got a, a, a pen light, you know, a little purse light and you're kind of shining it around and that's the extent of your conscious mind. You're able to poke at little things and, and consciously, due to the fact that we got a memory, that we can say, okay, there was that thing over there, there's that thing over there, there's that thing, and you can kind of put these pieces together and we get, you know, the images on Plato's cave you know, one of the uh, uh, old stories about that, you know, that is, you know, the, we're seeing the reflections of the light on the wall, the shadows, and we, and our senses, we're kind of trying to, our minds are trying to figure out these shadows. But the, um, so most of what's happening there is happening at a pre-conscious level. Something very interesting happens whenever we, start to make the pre-conscious conscious. And that requires shifting out of the conscious mind. That requires shifting out of the rational mind, which is a representational mind. It's a mind that, that thinks this is not that, and it's this like this other thing. And, and it creates a, you know, uh, uh, categories of thought and the categories of, of qualities and, it organizes things and hey, we can tell a story about this. We can, if we get enough of these qualities together, again, we're like, we're shining that little light there. We get enough information together. We connect the dots and we come up with a theory about what all these things in the darkness are. 
And that's what the that's what the rational mind does, and it's that's what makes us human. And we we don't want to get rid of that. We we kind of like it. It's 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 uh, our ability to tell a story, our ability to put things together and organize the chaos of the universe into something which has meaning is what makes us humans. And I, uh, you know, I like it. But you can get stuck in the story. You can get stuck in your, the way you rationally think about things. And then everything is kind of filtered through that story, be it a theory, be it an ideology, an ism, be it a, you know, a fear, be it a whatever. So you get, you, if you get stuck in that, stuck in the story, then you're no longer in present time. You're no longer with the moment because it takes time to run anything through your nervous system and come up with a conclusion. There's, you know, and quarter to half a second, maybe, maybe more, you know, at least a quarter to half a second. So you're always kind of running things, like there's a videotape going on there. That's always on a tape delay and you're looking at how was life a quarter of a second, a half a second ago, which in most life, it, it, we, we, we build that into our, our day-to-day living. We are perfectly okay with that pace. In our conversations, we don't need to be any faster than that because it takes a little time for the information to come in. We think about it, we respond, etc. Where we do notice it, though, is whenever we are engaged in something where a half a second is a long time. So, you know, I think in the example I gave in one of the books was like if a, if a pitcher is throwing a 95 mile an hour fastball, you don't have a half a second to, to figure out how, the, how that pitch is coming in and, and what is the best time to initiate my swing because, you know, it's over. So there you're operating at a much higher level at that point, you're, you are, have shifted out of the rational mode and you are moving into a mind-body integration at that point that allows you to perceive much more than you can in your rational state. So we get there through feeling consciously feeling. And so going back to the, the, the initial question here is that distinguishing between the, the afferent and the efferent, the, the afferent is information coming in, efferent is going out. So then in the terms of the neural network, the efferent is the motor function of the, of the nervous system. That is whatever the, whatever the central nervous system says to my hand, okay, hand, raise. And it, okay, it's coming from the central nervous system going out. That is an efferent neural uh, instruction. It is an entirely different set of neurons, entirely different quality of neuron than the afferent, which is coming in. That's where, you know, Rick feels the top of his head and says, oh, huh, I'm feeling this. And then, Whenever I it comes through and comes back to my central nervous system and and all the all the guys get on board and say, oh, that's that's the top of your head, Rick. And there's hair there, and and you can feel the weight of the hand, and, and all the, the story starts to come up, and I start to get, you know, into that whole thing. And why is my hand up here? I don't know. This is I had up for some reason. I had the thought it was a really swell idea. Put my hand on top of my head. Huh? Why would I do that? And then I get into the story. Okay. When when you get into the story, you're out of present time. It's not only a good idea to get into the story. It's fun and it uh, is illuminating and creates meaning in our lives. Just don't get stuck there. And if you're looking, staring down a 95 mile an hour fastball, 
don't spend a whole lot of time in your story because it's a strike, you know, and you got three of those and you're out. So same thing with martial arts. If some if someone is throwing a punch at my face, I don't have time to think about it and say, hmm, that punch is traveling at approximately 70 miles an hour and it's crossing a, a distance of two feet. And let me see, pick my my uh, eye watch here and I'll uh, compute the the momentum of the uh, no too late <laughs> so the what I do is I feel which then enables me to move into a super conscious state a mind body integration which then awakens spirit integration of the whole being where whenever you move into a state of wholeness you start to open the door to that something more and that's where we start to mind body spirit integration is that is what i consider to be a super conscious state and then we whenever you go into that resonance that that wholeness then it is my experience and it's something which i I find corroborated in my readings, and that is you open up to energy and information that is not limited to stuff you already have. You can you're awakened to much more coming from coming from beyond you and in a whole lot of different forms. And the farther out you go, the more woo-woo you get, the you know, the, the creaker it gets, but that's cool. So uh, the uh, simple language, you got your sensory, I feel, you got your motor, I do, and consciously separating the two so that you are aware of the feeling and you're aware of the doing and that you consciously, intentionally do. So a lot of what we're talking about lately is, you know, feeling into the stillness to mobilize the chi and then to initiate another movement at that point. So we actually take, you know, recognize that stillness for, you know, as we, you know, talk, if we think about it in terms of a pendulum, no time in that turnaround, you know, the hand is going out, the hand is coming back and, and I'm not thinking, you know, I'm not stopping it unless I am, you know, I can stop it to feel into it and say, okay, that's what the stillness feels like. Okay, now I can feel into the stillness even though it's, there's a continuous motion there. And uh, so being able to initiate movement, motor, and be able to receive information from the environment, sensory, being able to intentionally do both enables you to then get into the essence of Techie Tran. 